Hello, everyone. Before we put our anatomy learning caps on, let me ask you something. What do you visualise when you think about the functions of a muscle? You're probably thinking about a red-coloured bundle of fibres contracting or relaxing to result in some sort of movement, right? Well, when I think about the functions of a muscle, I think about a pheasant, two feet, and a dog, just like the ones you can see on your screen. What do these three images have in common? At first it might be difficult to see the connection, but after you get past the dog's gracefulness and the pheasant's sense of fashion, you can observe that they're all curling and standing on their toes. One muscle contributing to these actions in humans is the flexor digitorum longus, and in this tutorial we'll learn all about its functions. But before we dive into the nitty gritty, let me show you the muscle first and put it into context. You can now see the flexor digitorum longus muscle highlighted on your screen in all its glory. As you can see from its location, this muscle is part of the posterior compartment of the leg. This compartment is in turn divided into two muscle groups, a superficial one and a deep one. The muscle in question, the flexor digitorum longus, is part of the deep muscle group, which is situated below the superficial subcompartment. So how important are the muscles of the posterior compartment, including the flexor digitorum longus? In short, very. Without them, you wouldn't be able to walk, run, jump or balance yourself on your toes when reaching up to grab something off the top shelf. Now let's get back to the flexor digitorum longus and find out a bit more about it. For a muscle to perform its functions, it needs to know what action you want to perform, how to do it and when. This type of information is carried by nerves, and muscles are innervated by many of them. The flexor digitorum longus is no exception. It's innervated by the tibial nerve, which you can now see on our 3D model. The tibial nerve is one of the terminal branches of the longest nerve in the human body, the sciatic nerve. It's useful to note the root values of the nerve associated with the muscle we are learning, in this case the root values of the tibial nerve, specifically its muscular branches to the flexor digitorum longus, which are S1 and S2. If you were to look for the flexor digitorum longus, you would find it in a very specific location inside the deep subcompartment of the posterior leg. It lies medial to the flexor hallucis longus and underneath the soleus, which is one of your calf muscles. The muscle sits on the tibia and the tibialis posterior muscle, so it really does lie quite deep inside your leg. If we look at our friend on the screen, we can see the attachments of the flexor digitorum longus muscle. Firstly, it originates from the highlighted area over here, which is the medial part of the posterior surface of the tibia. After passing inferiorly towards the medial malleolus, it curves around it, wraps underneath the foot, then inserts onto the bases of the distal phalanges of the lateral four digits, which are now highlighted for you on the screen. In other words, these are the second, third, fourth and fifth toes of your foot. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full length video and master anatomy.